Chris Froome takes provisional place in history with Giro Italia win. Uh, that's I think that's somewhat accurate. I guess, but it's just kind of funny that why even write the article? You, you were arguing that it would no matter what happens with the Sabutamo case, which is true, it won't affect the standings. So why do you say provisional place? Because of Walta. Okay, but no matter what happened there. Whatever they find with the Subutamal case, which happened at the Vuelta, right? It's not going to affect the Giro d'Italia. Read the headline. Chris Froome takes provisional place in history with the Giro Italia win. In history. Here's the thing. If he loses the Vuelta, then he doesn't have the pseudo slam, right? Exactly. There's no history. That's, That's my point. I didn't hear the part about in history. Interesting. Your facts. Chris Froome decides to lay to stick one on absolutely everybody. Oh, and is it going to be a knockout blow? This is outstanding run right now. We've still got 80 kilometers to go, don't forget. Chris Froome is taking advantage here. Well, my goodness, is it going to be taking the mick? To be honest, when he goes over the top, how long is he prepared to be isolated? It's about measuring himself against those who, of course, at the top of the standings, were looking back at him. Well, right now, they're, they're looking up and possibly in awe. We'll wait and see. Let's wait and see how he goes. He's going extraordinarily well, Brian. He's hit form at the right moment. Welcome to another amazing episode of the Between Two Wheels podcast. I say amazing because I trust my editing skills, even though we haven't done this yet. Tyler Yonke, Kurt Mills, and Chris Flower. How are you doing, uh, Kurt? We'll start with you. How are you doing? Doing good. Glad to be here. Happy Memorial Day. You too. Did you ever serve in the military or not time? I in the military, no. All right, well, how about you, Chris? Uh, I'm doing well. I haven't served time, <laughs> be it in the, uh, in the penitentiary or in the military, but happy Memorial Day <laughs> to all. Any family members served or <laughs> home and abroad? Just checking to see if Chris had family members. Yeah. Uncle, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Marines and uh, Navy. Gotcha. And uh, yeah, my grandpa was in World War One, actually. Wow. That's all I have to say. Yeah. And and I must clarify with my German background that he was actually with the, the American forces. Good side. <laughs> all right. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, we are going to just do, it's like I said, it's Memorial Day. We're early out here in a nice little spot in Auburn so far. There was a drone heading up overhead. Hopefully that thing won't bother us too much. We'll do a little recap of our Tour of California experience. Um, some Giro d'Italia. That Hammer Series, Kurt, is lighting up the world. Have you followed any of that? <laughs> no. I already told you this. I haven't, haven't watched any of it. I've heard it's great, though. I heard it was great last year. I feel bad for missing. Yeah, I don't know. Luckily, it's a series, and I think you'll get an opportunity to catch more of them. Yeah, ne- next week it's uh, back on again, so we can follow that. All right, so last week, I don't even know if we did much recap of the Giro. Should we start there? Should the, there was a little, little something that happened over in Italy. Um, I'm wearing a shirt that's... I don't it's know if pink. it's pink. Is it pink? I went and bought it. I thought it was like a dirty red, but or faded red. But it's I think it's pink. salmon pink, and no, it's it's, not salmon. it's in honor of the uh, the Giro. I want to say it's a little little faded, kind of like the Giro title for Chris Froome. So Chris Froome, we, last we left off of the tour, the Giro, mm-hmm. we had Simon Yates in charge going into the the time trial. He does a stellar time trial. I heard uh, Matt White, their director, say that afterwards he was so bad that um, he had gone so deep that they had to postpone or delay the some ceremonies and stuff for him to get a little revived. But stage 18 to uh, Prado Novoso, he lost a little bit of time, and then we had the the key stage of the whole tour on stage 19, up over the Finestre, up the Siestre, and then up the Jaffra climb to Bardonecchia. Um, Kurt, you tuned in that morning. We can we can talk about this. Obviously, Chris Froome takes three minutes over um, Carapaz and Lopez, and who else was there? Pino. Dumoulin might have been in there. Dumoulin, and then Dumoulin lost another 20, 30 seconds. Um, so he ends up having the overall win by about 48 or so, uh, Chris Froome, that is, leading into that day. What was your impression of that ride and that morning? And and look, we're not going to sugarcoat it. It looked a little suspect. And what was your thinking right away? And how does it make you feel about the race in general? Yeah, so was, yeah, I woke up early that morning and, and brought it up on my phone. And uh, I remember immediately. I think Froome had thirty eight seconds um, going over the first climb, 
and uh, there was still 80k out <laughs> he was moving pretty well and within the next like I don't know, 5, 10, 15 minutes uh, at the other side of the, the descent, he had, you know, a minute 30. And then throughout the rest of that stage, it just kept moving up until the final climb and it finally kind of flatlined and maybe started coming back a little bit. Um, but the overall feeling was dread a little bit, um, just in that it felt like we'd seen similar stuff before. I know there's there's arguments to against that somewhat, but it felt like Froome needed three minutes and change and he went out and (laughs) got three minutes and change um you know through you know sky's magic with marginal gains and putting masseuses with nutrition bottles every 20 minutes and so forth um whatever i i saw the um how the race was won by cosmo catalano or whatever he posted around he picked the wrong stage right huh didn't he pick the wrong stage to profile he did he did 19 in there well i know but it wasn't as in depth as no he, he did yeah well he did from the time trial on but what I was going to say was there was a lot of video of Astana collaborating with Sky and For a lot snacks. of a lot of few, <laughs> a lot of food being handed between the two of them yeah that was that was strange yeah I don't know that Astana is a team you want to get your fuel from though well I th- it looked like Sky was giving the fuel to Astana wasn't I, it true okay yeah. you're just making a joke yeah okay <laughs> not Sorry. very well let me step on it it's early morning chris would you would you take away from that and kind of the tour in general uh, kind of similar thing as kurt where i i tuned in with maybe 75 80k to go and usually i'll pick it up first thing in the morning when i wake up and try and make sense of what's going on in the race and it was just kind of blown apart at that point and trying to figure out how Froome is however many seconds up the road and the pink jersey is 5 10 15 minutes back and it was just a, a crazy stage but yeah it, it definitely didn't look right in terms of the performance that we had seen from Froome up until that point in the Giro but you know at the end of the day it is what it is and uh, I was definitely pulling for for Dumoulin I was really hopeful that they could get their little group working a little more collaboratively and and start pulling them back but it just didn't happen um, yeah it was definitely kind of like a a groan feeling when you see the end result on that day, but what are you going to do? Now, Tyler, there were a lot of hoots and hollers (laughs) from over in your neck of the woods during that whole thing. Oh yeah. We were, we were dancing on the tables, (laughs) throwing uh, uh, party flavors. Uh, well, when I woke up, uh, same thing, I popped this thing up on my phone at the, the race that is, (laughs) and it's hard, you know, you don't have as much detail as a TV. So I looked there and, um, Froome had gone over the Finestria. And so, uh, Yates, I looked there and I could see the pink. It says pink jersey, like 15 minutes back. I'm like, what is going on? And yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm, look, I'm trying to see all these groups. And I could read Pots of Vivo on there, and then finally it's coming to what it is. And I see Frooms up, you know, on Dumoulin, and um, my heart sunk right away because it was, you know, when when we had seen Froome, well, for a few reasons, I just felt like, oh, this isn't what cycling needs. Uh, I don't have the hubris to say he's guilty, but I it's suspect and it's weird. And I was actually with the subunimal thing. I was actually enjoying the fact that he was suffering and being a little bit more human in this race. So you had that feeling. And then at some point in the next few minutes, it <laughs> seems like you, you said, all right, but I have to defend this. I never defended it. So I'm going to start working on an argument, right? That was no. within the first, I think part of my, and, and, and we'll get to what you you want to talk about here is <clears throat> I, I see a lot, you know, um, people want to compare it to, Landis and some of these other things. Let me give a breakdown here. Of go ahead. No, go for it. I'm, I'm this is just a this is what's that guy's name on Twitter that does a bunch of the numbers. I can't. It's it's a name. I don't even think it's an actual name. It's just a bunch of hieroglyphics. And yeah, A M I something or other. Yeah. When he, he does a bunch of these breakdown things, and and here's his breakdown of Froome's time gains over different sections. So the Finestria climb, and you know these are somewhat subjective, I think, but I mean they're pretty close to the truth probably. Finestria climb, forty two seconds. The the descent he gets another forty four seconds. The false flat twenty one seconds. Here's the big big gain it was the Cessier climb of fifty eight seconds. The descent then fifteen seconds. False flat twenty four, and then loses one second to Dumoulin on the final climb. So it's interesting too that the the descent time. A lot of the people were quoting a minute thirty on descents, and and that clearly is only about a minute there. Yeah, yeah, correct. So, so I, that's what I'm saying. Some of that's weird. Right. Um, and I know that uh, Froome waited for Reichenbach and then complained that he went downhill like an old lady. Dumoulin. Dumoulin waited I'm sorry, Dumoulin, yeah. yeah. And so that was the interesting part. Um, 
what I would say to compare, uh, let's go. All I want to do is say, I don't like I said, I'll use the word hubris once again. Don't have that to say that Froome's absolutely guilty because then there's always factors you want to to, to bring in. He didn't right, get right. like five, ten minutes. He got three. If you take away the dissents, um, Dumoulin's still in pink. Then you go, okay, Floyd Landis, what had he ever done prior to that? He won like a Perry Nice. He won the Tour of California. Okay. And then he was in the tour where everyone's tip top. Then he had lost 10 minutes the day before. Then you have all the teams chasing him, and he still pulls this number out. Whereas Froome has a, has a record of everything, and you know, winning multiple tours. And the guys chasing him were not full teams. It was Dumoulin, Pino, and Reichenbach solely. I don't, I don't say that. So, so I don't think it's as abnormal coming from who it is. But you've made some really good points to me of, Look, you put this all in perspective. It's the, the the way it appears right away with Salbutamol and all these and, and Team Sky's weird hiding of, of all their data and the, the 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 UK report that's come out. You know, it's it's not a good look, and it's hard to. And he's he. I think he and his team then have the 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 onus is on them to prove themselves in a way that they're not doing well. At. Yeah, this gets back to just him racing, the decision to race. And, you know, it, it's clouded no matter what happens. It's even worse when a stage like that occurs. Yeah. Um, but, it, yeah, it's unfortunate for the sport. I, I quoted to you the in, or the quote you got from Dave Toll um, last week at the Tour of California. It was Dave Toll? Sorry. Yeah. Which was, uh, you can kind of judge an event uh, and quality on it, on the quality of the winner. And I think he was using Katie Hall as an example in that particular case. Is, it's a great, great event, great winner. And this this one, you just you just <laughs> Froome's a great guy, probably, hopefully, but there are so many clouds hanging over his head and over over what he's done in the past, and Team Sky in general with uh, the Wiggins stuff and, and the UPS or I guess whatever the f- yeah I think collectively the the Sky stuff with the the lack of transparency and the kind of living in in the gray zone, if you will, in terms of what they've done historically doesn't really help with what's over overshadowing Froome right now. So it, it definitely makes you question the end result. But No, I, I agree. And uh, I look, and even the subunimal thing is weird because it's not, it's a control uh, and I'll just, this is a kind of grays everything out and you have enough little gray things. But by the time you get to the finish, all those things start to add up, right? Right. The, exactly. The, the subunimal thing is in it. And this might be a UCI thing. And I wish that guy would stop the f- lawnmower but anyway this might be a uci thing which is the subutamol thing is a controlled substance so you're allowed to do it and then they say you can only do so many puffs but then we're going to measure it with concentration in your urine which is it's it's kind of like saying you can have two drinks but we're going to measure your alcohol content after that so it's a weird thing there as well and then and then what are the rules around it and so you've got so much dis, dis information out there. Like, like we've heard that he could race, obviously. This would be normally silent. You know, no one would know about a secret. And then um, his results for the Giro are not going to be stripped. So, you know, why wouldn't you race in that right. case? And why would you not continue on? You're going to get the last one done. Okay, well, let me get a Giro title because that one's going to be taken away. And it sounds like he's going to be able to race the Tour as well because it shouldn't be resolved by then either. So, yeah, just keep on trucking. Yeah, it's it, and that's I think that's the bad part for cycling. I don't know that I blame Froome on his decisions to race. Um, I think there's some bad. I don't know. You you, you would disagree. Uh, one of you guys. I mean, I, maybe I, it's a difference that it is now public rather than private. If it was private, right? Yeah, I I think you know he's a big enough guy where he can step aside and say, yeah, I probably shouldn't race for the image of the sport until this is resolved. If it wasn't leaked then yeah we wouldn't know and he could just kind of race as he sees fit but uh, like i said he's he's working within the rules that are that are set forth i think the uci probably would be better served to step back and and reevaluate the rules and maybe set a time frame to have this resolved and you know establish whether or not people could or could not race during the investigation period Uh, then it'll alleviate all this crud that's going on right now I'm looking at you, Kurt. Oh, I'm sorry. I I was just gonna say it sounds like a witch hunt. <laughs> no, I don't know. We'll we'll see what happens. You set in a time frame, and yeah, Giuliani over here. 
Yeah. <laughs> I just, I don't know. It's just odd that it's so open-ended and yeah. I mean, since he is such a big name, it's, it's definitely a, a greater focal point than some of the other guys that dealt with the cell beat mall in the past where it probably wasn't leaked because nobody really cared about those guys. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. And, and maybe we give too much credit to this big behemoth, uh, the UCI, having organized and, and um, you know, they're going to run things correctly. And, and it's just another inbred organization. <laughs> we do give them too much credit. They're, really. they're top of their game. They're the best out there. Well, you see all the stuff that happens with um, FIFA and these other organizations that kind of manage sport. And it seems like it's kind of corrupt. And, and I, we, we've seen that in the past with what? happen with Lance Armstrong and yeah so yeah it on. seems like the whole TUE approach should probably be reevaluated and when you have questionable doctors signing off on TUE applications on behalf of the UCI it's like you well, know maybe things aren't on the up and up completely and they may want to reevaluate how they're doing stuff it's a wacky sport that's for sure definitely but uh, it was a, a fun race so, to watch. so let's talk about the races i mean did this take it away from you not enjoying it as an entertainment aspect and a spectacle otherwise i mean there were some good ups and downs did you enjoy the the giro either one of you it was entertaining i, I was really pulling for for yates because he yeah. was because uh, of his so toe well. issue that's another thing. Yeah, he's he's got a, a TUE uh, looming over him in the past and a, a short suspension. But it was cool to see that team do well because they're just really open about you know how they go about their races and they've got a cool YouTube channel and it's fun to root for them. And they were doing so well. And then Chavez exploded and then Yates exploded. And uh, I guess Nieve had that really good last day. But other than that, the team just kind of faded away quickly. Yeah, it was all enjoyed. To me, it was 18 great stages. Even stage 19 had sort of a professional wrestling sort of appeal to it where <laughs> where, where the villain needs three minutes and he goes and grabs it um, without too much trouble. So it, it was, yeah, it was still fun to watch. Uh, the stage 20 and 21, I probably watched it less just because, one, it was kind of determined, and two, um, I think at that point I had started to I had that bad feeling. You didn't have any hope on stage twenty that that Dumoulin <laughs> could. He tried. He, he did try. Gave it. A, gave, yeah, gave it a good go a couple of times, but it, gosh, it didn't look like Froome had too much trouble. No, I think he that. he was he's gunning for the sprint too, and he took it. Anybody surprise you in this race? Well, let me get back to you're talking about Mitch and Scott. Um, five stage wins. Is that right? Chavez with one, Nieve with one, Yates with three. Um, they were in the pink for like 13 days. I mean, it was a pretty stellar race. You have it was also interesting to see the massive explosions of people. You know, Yates loses like 25, 30 minutes. Pino ends up doing the same thing at one point, uh, the stage 20. Um, Woods he Woods ended up an hour back. Yeah, but no I mean, more. like on one day where they're like in contention and then just gone. Yeah, started with Chavez. Chavez was another. I mean, there was some huge explosions. Ch- Chavez, we don't even know what's going where on. Where he's that at? Guy. Yeah, I mean that guy. <laughs> He never rebounded either. It was just no, he blew for like up two and weeks. He's just been terrible, he's hanging in the broom wagon. I'm surprised he finished. To be honest, well, did he? Did you check the results? I, I thought think, he was yeah, racing he did because he was on day. stage 21 yesterday, Smiling. riding in front of the broom wagon, just oh. off the <laughs> neutralized GC group. He was falling off that group. So, so uh, yeah, who it, knows? Anybody from there that like there were some young guys that, that came about that were you know should maybe to, to see in the future here, Carapaz. From movie star, the young writer, um, he was real close to Lopez, who we've talked about, Angel Lopez, Superman, uh, Ben O'Connor, which we I talked about here just previously, a tour of the Alps, he had won a stage, yeah. and then he was coming good, and then stage nineteen, I never saw the crash, but I guess he was he in the Pozzo Vivo group or the Dumoulin group, one of those, and he crashed out. Um, I'm not sure. It but was on the descent of the Siesta, <laughs> I think, and he was done. So. Yeah, he pulled out of the race, right? Yeah, and then uh, Aru exploded. Oh, Aru terribly. was another explosion. Yeah. What? So, what was more fanciful, or, or those are the? <laughs> you always well, I think like that this. right there is the most fanciful. <laughs> no, fantastic. What was the most fantastic? What was the most fantastic? Was it to see Chris Froome do the, his attack or Aru's time trial? Oh, that time trial was impressive. I mean, what did he end up without the penalty? He was fifth or something. Yeah. Yeah, that was. Uh, it was great to see Tony Martin's reaction when he was in the hot seat, just kind of a, a head shake of, I don't know if you want to call it disbelief or, or laughter, but yeah, it was definitely one where everybody's like, 
the hell is this? So uh, I, I didn't see it, but he was just following a moto most of the time, or I didn't see any of his time trial. I just saw some of the the live ticker, and then the the comments on on the live ticker were just like, "This is unbelievable." <laughs> Bobby well, Arug. they went back and were videoing, uh, like, look a video and talking to motorbikes, and they gave him a 20-second penalty. Right. Th- there were other guys that got two-minute penalties. I'm watching one. it was one. for following a motorbike, right? I think his, well, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and that's a tough but, one. Wh- I, well, what's the motorbike allowing this for? Right. Wasn't, wasn't what does the motorbike just... accelerate <laughs> Yeah. get out of the way? Because if you're on, on the TT bike, you're going to try and pick the shortest, cleanest line, and if the motorbike's there, what are you supposed to do, brake? Yeah. There were other pictures, though. I saw a team car... In, in front of one of the and I, I'm like is this recon but I think it was during the race that guy got two minutes there were two teammates that were just on each other for um, like a minute or two and they were showing it on live TV at the yeah. time and I'm like oh and then they both got penalized and they're mostly I think the it was UAE and, yeah, U- yeah. Luis maybe so yeah the whole team had a let's have a strategy <laughs> you get a team car out there uh, you wait for this guy <clears throat> bottle hand ups from the car yeah the TT. yeah That's sticky good. bottles some crazy shit any uh, any last oh Last stage, so, and we'll talk about Tour of California then, maybe uh, the Folsom race as well, but last stage, what did you think of, walk us through that, Chris. I, I really only saw the last handful of <laughs> kilometers, but I know that they- Well, I don't they mean the strategy, doing... but give us the breakdown of the, the neutral, oh, the yeah. win, the, the weirdness of the per- so promenade. The the GC group was, was neutralized, so I think when they got to the circuits, they said, okay, that's the end of the GC race, and- and then the sprinters were kind of just free to go about their business. And I think it split the field in about half. And I don't know how they made the decision who went with which group because Pozaviva went with the, the group that didn't get neutralized. So if you take times at the finish, I guess he could be the overall winner, right? Yeah. Because he was 20 minutes up. But um, I guess the, the logic behind that was it was on a cobbled uh, set of streets and it had rained the day before and the streets were a little slick and people were worried about guys crashing out. So they just determined that, yeah. We'll call the race good. But then uh, the sprint group was pretty impressive because there was, uh, I think it was, again, Mitchelton Scott had Yul Jensen off the front with um, another rider. I don't recall who that was. But they were they were off the front for a good while and then uh, reeled back in with about, I don't know, probably 8K to go. And that uh, kind of led to the sprint finish. And it was a, a good showdown between, I think it was Viviani and Bennett with Bennett taking the win. Um, looked like Viviani had an awesome lead out and just uh, ran out of gas maybe 20 meters before the finish because he kind of just stopped pedaling, and uh, Bennett came right around him. Yeah, I, watching that, Bennett had a teammate and was trying to move him up, and then Bennett just slotted in behind Viviani Yeah, and kind of got between him, him and his, I don't know if there was a sweeper or what, but Viviani jumped, and Bennett was right there, and then he started looked good, and I think Viviani at some point noticed he was coming by, and it was just like, fuck this. Yeah, he just, I mean, he literally just stopped pedaling. Yeah. Yeah, I can't win. And I saw a quote with. And it was, I was glad. I think you and I both, you know, gave each other high fives uh, <laughs> via text at that moment, um, because you know I'm tired of that team winning, Kurt. Yeah, I've heard. I've heard this. <laughs> yeah, it's like good. you and Sky. No, uh, uh, Viviani seems like a nice guy, but uh, it was good to just see Bennett um, kind of get the better of that train. Yeah, that lead out. I would agree, but no, it was a. Uh, I don't know. The neutralizing that early just seems kind of silly. I guess if the course was that unsafe, it, it shouldn't have been a surprise that there was potential for it to be unsafe when they were doing the planning. Maybe come up with a better route so you can actually have a race. But in all likelihood, the, the GC guys weren't going to do anything in the way of racing anyway. But it just seems silly to effectively end the race on stage 20. Well, I think they plan the route for the best possible uh, scenario and then hope that happens like weather wise right you know let's run it through these back alleys in rome and uh, hope that the weather's good for it um i don't know i think the riders they they, they probably like that it was it was interesting to see and i, I and some of me was kind of wondering if this would be a good thing of neutralizing races so far out like that where you can just get a full sprint team to go without getting it clogged up with all these other riders right because it was like what 35 40 guys and it was interesting i don't know so, yeah, I'd be curious to know how they made the decision of what group you fell into. Was that just self-selection? Oh, I think it was. Just like, I, mean, I don't want to race who hard. Wants, who wants to come across the line with Froome and wave to everybody the whole time? Because they're like 17 minutes back. Right. Yeah, they were definitely soft-pedaling the so, Jesus out of that. Did you see them coming across the finish line then? The the Froome group? Yeah. No. I turned it off after the sprint. I think they did their whole chorus line. I did see some pictures of that, and I, I think that's the stupidest thing ever. I I, I tr- uh, it would be fun to watch that where one of the guys, like, 
can't ride like that and they fall down. I I've heard that Richie happened. Port <laughs> couldn't. They said he couldn't ride without hands, so they were, they all kind of like hold each other. Without <laughs> hands. Yeah, like hey, I'm no hands. He, you don't see him post up. Yeah, that's the least extent. of his trouble. But <laughs> <laughs> what's that mean? I don't know. <laughs> all right. Any uh, closing words on the Giro? <laughs> well, wow, look at that content- congratulations content- to Tom Dumoulin. Yeah, I agree. That's what I'll say. No, yeah, it was definitely a good performance on his part. So, is he a is he a guy that we're going to see um, do the tour and and not this year? No, not this year. You know the 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 Daphne starts. Are, are you sure of that? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Oh, because there was an there was an article that was just posted that said he he might be in for the tour. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Huh. I'd be surprised. Well, he might be in for it, but I mean that's well, we'll see. I I could see him going. What other option do they have as a team, really? I mean, nobody for GC, and they don't really have a who's Michael Matthews. Who's yeah. that guy they lost to the French team? Oh, Warren Bargy. Warren Bargy. Warren Bargy, yeah. You don't know that guy off the top of the year. <laughs> I should. Well, that, uh, that, that would have been a good guy to race for. No, they had um, Wilco Kelderman, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Didn't last he year. finish like third or so in the Volta last year? Sure. So they've got, they've got maybe some. Maybe second. Maybe second. They've got some potential, but... Um, Interesting. Uh, yeah, he's. I think he's. He's an interesting guy. I like how he just says what he what he likes. All right, so we're done with that. Um, we did. Let's talk about Folsom Race, and then we'll finish off with our tour of California memories. Fantastic. Or, or is there? How about some? Let's do some winners and losers first from the uh, the Vuelta. Or did we already do that? Uh sure. Winner. I. Uh, I'm a big fan <laughs> fan of Tom Dumoulin. Losers, man. There's a lot of losers. The guys that lost time. My my loser would be Thibaut Pino for the the breakdown on stage twenty. I mean, so late in the race to have a podium spot locked up, and then, gosh, body just shut down. I guess. So his team says he uh, had to go to hospital and has a lung infection. Oh so boy. Okay. Definitely a bummer. Yeah. Damn. I'm sure, they'll get him uh, a TUE to clear that up though. <laughs> <laughs> be right as rain. Well, I was watching that, and he had the team around him. He was trying to get a bottle from the car. He was like weaving. So I guess that's what happens. It's kind of sucks. The guys pushing them. Yeah, yeah. Um, Chris, winners, losers. <sighs> Kurt picked Dumoulin as the, as the winner. I would have gone that way, but I, I'll, I'll go with Yates as as the winner. I mean, he just uh, <laughs> two and a half weeks. If the if the stage race was that long, that would have been great. But he just seemed to be, you know, even when he lost all of his time, his his spirits seemed pretty positive, and he's like, yeah, I'll be back. I sucked on that stage, and I'll improve. So it's it was good to see that attitude instead of just completely shutting down like for a loser i would go with aru he just blew up on whatever stage that was and just shooing the cameras away and you know then ultimately whatever he did on the time trial wasn't that great either so it's just uh it didn't seem like a great performance on his part so those those two contrast each other pretty well So simon yates for the win okay yeah no i he i liked watching that first two weeks with him i mean he he did he said, I need X amount of time going into the time trial, and I'm going to take it as much as I can. Now, I don't know if that just came up and you know bit him in the end, but I liked it. It was it was fun to watch. It was fun to watch, yeah. yeah it was. Every day. I uh, think he was mostly worried about having given up those four bonus seconds to his teammate earlier, and that just weighed on him so heavily <laughs> that he yeah. couldn't uh, rebound it, it was from devastated. That. Maybe he wouldn't have had to gone for so many of those uh, those other seconds if he had just taken exactly. those. Yeah. He, he should have known that Chavez was going to blow up. Good Lord. Go on, Tyler. Oh, well, there, there, I, there's a there's a there's a there's a bunch of winners. Um, I'd like to pick Chris. No, I'm not going to pick Chris. <laughs> uh, Why? Brailsford? You've been picking them all week. <laughs> I am not. You, um, my loser. My no. My winner. I I'm going to say uh, Ben O'Connor. I I saw him coming in. I uh, I was I, I don't know. I just like dim, Team Dimension Data really needed some. It's and then also maybe I should be my loser because of his crash out. That team needs something um, desperate right now. Um, you know, Cavendish isn't helping him, and, and no. his 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 result would have been good for him. But is Cavendish doing the tour? I assume he is. I assume so. I mean, you have to take him to the tour, right? Yeah, like yeah. it's required. Yeah. So, it's so like having Adam Hansen, you got to take him. Yeah. I think take he's, him to, he's hanging it up, isn't he? Well, he is now. But yeah. I'm just saying, if he's on your roster, you got to take him to. He's yeah. vegan. I heard that on yeah some YouTube show. Yeah. Uh, my loser, maybe Mike Wood, and, and the loser in this just happens to be like the people that uh, you know. He was looking good. He almost got a stage win, and you know he, he got pretty sick as well. And yeah, Canadians are known to have, to to do well at the Volta. I mean at the Giro. So I just 
We'll take. Uh, he's an American if he does well, and he's Canadian. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Doesn't do well. Um, we had the Folsom Crit this weekend. We did a few races there. We did a couple. We did a couple. Um, any any sta- outstanding moments you want to talk about for those? The this uh, is. So, I mean, congrats to Willie Myers. First time he said, I think he said five years winning that race. Yeah, he's. That's a pretty big gap for a young guy like that to to have. Did you say young guy? Yeah, there was a uh, a finish line video I saw, and it was a really close finish with um, the Tarun rider. I forget his name. Uh, Jeff Skinner. No. <laughs> Lender. Yes. Jeff yeah, Lender. it almost looked like Willie may have posted up a little early because it. I guess I mean obviously he felt he had the win in the bag, but it was it was a good finish. So I ran into Willie yesterday on the on the bike, and we spun around for a while, and then stopped, and got coffee. So he was talking, and I hope I can describe some of these things that he was saying. So. He said Linder jumped before the, and Linder's probably going to have a camera, which he also said it would be interesting because uh, as they're coming around there, Willie goes, I last lap, I'm going to be on Linder's wheel. He goes, he's got a good lead out. I'll stay with him. And then he was battling with Timmy because Timmy Bauer was leading out Josh and they were kind of, Timmy was trying to get on Linder's wheel mm-hmm. instead of just like maybe leading Josh up himself. So he said there's some, there should be some pretty good footage of them, <laughs> of them kind of going at it. But he said Linder jumped well before the fir- the corner, and and he Willie's like perfect, jump on him. They're gonna come around, and then he's like, and then he just kept going, and you can see that in that video. Yeah. Willie has a hard time coming around him, yeah. close. and then he decides to post up. Ah, like I'm gonna post up anyway. Right. <laughs> Linder also had the better line. He, yeah. He took it on the inside yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. How you, what'd you think of that uh, that race, the P12 race? It was fast. It was one of those races where. The first 15 minutes, you're kind of thinking, okay, this is unsustainably fast. It's going to ease up. Then 30 minutes comes, and it's like, okay, it's going to ease up. And then an hour later, I don't think it ever eased up. I mean, that was a fast, fast race. And nothing really got away for any extended period of time because it was just it was full gas. It was, it was a tough race. Yeah, it was. But then that course kind of made, I mean, it's wide open. So it's, I always felt that there were times where I mean, if I needed to move up, I could still be moving up. Or moving back. I was some moving back. <laughs> you said there was a crash in there, Chris. I didn't see a bit. Yeah, that was um, on the last corner, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes in the race, something like that. Uh, one of the Tarun riders overlapped wheels in the corner and did a little overcorrection and then just kind of face planted at full speed and didn't look very good. I was uh, just off to the right of it and was able to, to slide past it, but uh, it was just landed on the ground face first and slid for for a few feet and when we came around the next time he was sitting off to the side with the with the medics and he he looked pretty bloodied so hopefully he's doing okay he was kind of talking and, and walking around but his face didn't look great yeah that sucks uh <laughs> let's go to top five here the p12s jake hensley audi reno josh carlin oak valley scott cohen davis bike club jeff linder Tarun, and willie myers in first uh Kurt, where were you at in this race? I'm trying to... Uh, towards the back. I don't know. I'm definitely towards the back. Yeah, we all... None Which, of us, we the, had done the Masters earlier. That's why I was excited to hear Simon Yates got the winner of the week at the, the Giro, because I feel like I still have a shot here from Chris. Maybe getting the winner of the week for Folsom Classic. Well, there's there's always that chance. Um, let's there do is. the 35s real quick. So we were in that one. There's mm-hmm. a break went off at lap one. Because lap two, lap two. There was a, a prem lap, on lap two, and yeah. they went, and then um, so I'll just say my embarrassing part was I, I decided oh I need to get up there, so I went with some. The guy was pulling, and we kind of went off, and, and then I get in, and um, we're, the break is coming back, and Chris Morris takes a pull through. I think a Ropkin comes through, um, and then he kind of just rolls up, and I'm like I didn't feel so good, and I'm I should just gone with him, but I didn't do any move. And he connects to the group. And Who then, did? I think it was a Ropkin. Oh, okay. And that was Jonathan Ropkin yeah, of, of uh, Pete's. And that was... Uh, that was the race. That, <laughs> I didn't that go... Was... I was there with him. It's not like I was dead. It was no, just... We... I just, did, just was not going to like kind of make any moves myself. And then later, I did try to go uh, with it, you know, put a big move in. And, and by then, it's it's stupid. But um, that's true. Actually, Chris and I were, were chatting and we said, Tyler's bridging, so... We were going to relax. Yeah. Uh-huh. We were shutting it down. You know? <laughs> we were shutting it down. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we were disappointed to see, one, the other guy made it who you were with, and two. Uh, Let me ask you what would be more disappointing, though. Me getting up there and still finishing back 12. in the pack 
That's true. Because that might have happened. So anyway, we had a, a group. I think it's uh, Zimni gave us a little breakdown. Um, yeah, he posted a, a video of the last two laps last night, and I, I chatted with him briefly after the race. And it sounds like um, you know he was he was definitely the designated sprinter for the team on his end, and he was. And they had how many in that group? They had five of the twelve. Pete's was in there. Jeez. Uh, but it looked like Zimney was was kind of marking either Claudio or Grunman, and Sayers jumped the field with about a half lap to go with a with an impressive move and held it to the end. And then Grunman and Claudio chased, and Zimney kind of launched off that to to take second. And it looks like if the course was another twenty meters. Zimney would have got him, would have got Sayers, but yeah, is what it is. Yeah, it's good Sayers. Move on Sayers's part. Sayers taking that inside line as well. I mean, rode the the gutter, the yeah, shortest saw that. possible <laughs> path to the finish line, which is classic. I mean, the guy's the guy's a smart racer. Definitely. And, uh, so I I got a, a pro tip here that I heard during the race. So uh, when I was trying to get up the road, uh, I think Grafath was up there with maybe Aaron Patterson. Someone, I think that's who it was, and they were like a chase group. So I I jump ahead and Josh Wood comes with me. He's a new Cat Three in the Masters guy too i didn't know he was 35 but he was um well we can check his license maybe but anyway he came comes with me and another guy and and we, we take a lap or so and we catch them and as we're catching them they're kind of doing some cat and mouse because you know patterson's not going to help at all and we're kind of in the middle of the road and josh comes through on the far right and, he, and he's very sincere about this he looks over and he's like guys the fastest line is this way <laughs> Shortest line, right? Shortest, shortest line, yeah, line. yeah. The, the shortest line is is in the gutter over here, <laughs> and he was sincere. And so we, um, I think, uh, Grafath gave him like a thumbs up and thanks for the info, and we all got a nose wheel, and then got swallowed up. Very sweet <laughs> of him. <laughs> yeah, so we have uh, Sayers winning, Zimney, uh, Mike, uh, Mike Sayers from Touchstone, Brian Zimney from Pete's, Dave Grunman third in Tarun, Claudio, of course, Thirsty Bear. <laughs> Uh, Mark Ho- Mark Howard from Sun Power in fifth. I'm just I'm just imagining the collective number of laps that group has probably gone around that course. Yeah, right. It's, yeah, because there was uh you know there was, there was some Bryants <laughs> in there, there was some uh, Martins in there, so a bunch of Dan's of and yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, let's talk about the, the the ladies race, the the start of it, because that was pretty hor- horrific. What happened there? I don't know if any of you got a, a look at it, but they started the race. Chris and I were over there by the start. Wasn't I think I was with you. Yeah. And we didn't see, and all of a sudden someone was down. I think she dropped a chain. Yeah, I didn't see what happened. I just I saw the the aftermath and uh, just laying there motionless, which is obviously scary. And it was yeah, right off the right off the start. So first lap, them coming around, they had to be neutralized. And they did a good job of that. Uh, the neutralization seemed to be a lot <laughs> more smooth than previous efforts out They've there. They've had practice now. They have, yeah. Um, but yeah. It, it was definitely scary because when you see somebody go down and just not move for a good 30 plus face seconds. down too. yeah face down and just not moving that was, that was scary yeah then they rolled her over and, and and i was okay so she's on her back you know the medics were over there yeah and then and then she, her legs start twitching and i don't know if she was seizing or she was just in so much pain that she was kicking her legs it, it, it was a little scary and it was mary maroon i've not heard if she's okay but they got the ambulance and the, the ladder truck and Took her off and um, yeah, that's pretty bad. And Melody Wong ends up uh, with the win after all that said and done. Yeah, there's another his. video of that finish, and she had a really powerful sprint. Yeah, to, she did to take the win. So that was, that was a good result too. And then some of those uh, team uh, ladies also ra- did our race. So congrats to them. Any other uh, results you saw out there? The threes we had. We mentioned Josh Wood, speed skater guy. There's a little speed skater duo going on there because I know uh, Isaiah. Yes. Right, rides for the or does uh, I don't know if he does inline skating or but he got second so he got the so the skaters go one two skaters go one two wow Jose Cuevas in third for orange pedal both first two guys have no teams Andy uh, Garzoli of Main Street and then our buddy and teammate Jeff Scott in fifth and I'll go down two more Ryan Chapernick for Fulton we we ride with him on Wednesdays and Jonah Kellogg Team Swift um, young kid. He also did the P12s. It seemed like he enjoyed it. Yeah, it was good to see him in the P123 race. And I think he, you know, came in 17th or whatever, but still just to 
to jump into that field and, and have a decent result is good to see for him. I think that may have been his first exposure to, to P1, 2, 3, 4, 5 racing. So cool stuff. <laughs> and, 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 you know, some of these races that's kind of sometimes you go, oh, you put in the threes in with all this. But, you know, these open courses, I think it's it's and Land Park does it as well. Sometimes it's a good experience for those guys to see the speed yeah. and just to, to, to do two races in a day. Of course, juniors can do that as well. Bigger fields, too. Right? Yeah. Masters 45, Dan Martin wins that out of a break with Joe Sterren and Jason Grafath, and then Dean LeBurge takes the field sprint over Chris Bakers and Mike Sayers. We'll have to talk to Jason about that finish. Yeah, he didn't look finish. like he had anything left for it. I don't know if it was anything left, or it, he you didn't. said it almost looked like he didn't know it was the last lap, because he was kind of looking around and had a jump for his sprint with maybe like 50 to go. Yeah, well, he was on the front, so I don't know. I don't, Maybe he was just like, hey, I'm going to get it, make sure we get there to yeah, the finish. Yeah, it could so. be. Um, I'll say for our race, uh, in the field sprint, Chris and Kurt, you guys, you know, we had fun, right? And then, uh, Kurt comes and <laughs> does a nice lead out for me, at least for the field sprint. Um, probably could, probably could have jumped a little harder after that first corner or that last corner. Yeah. But, but oh well. we were, we were, I think we were like third or fourth on the field sprint. So it's not so bad. I was, I didn't know that your result, cause I didn't know how many guys were in the break and then I'm looking at it now and seeing that you got fourth in the field sprint. That's, that's darn good. Well done. Oh, well. Winner of the race for me then is Tyler. Sorry, Kurt. <laughs> well, it should be Kurt because he he helped me that whole lap, okay. and I well, did mess Kurt, up then. the earlier part. You went with some breaks too. It was, uh, yeah. We had just three of us out there. Anybody else just fatigued by that course, just in general? Like, uh, man, I'm I'm having a hard time getting excited about that thing. Oh, fatigued! I thought you meant like physically, <laughs> but uh, you're well, like yeah, mentally. Physically, but uh, I'm trying Imagine. to think. It's been like it's been a number of years that we've been racing that course, and you do it twice a year. The course had a new new feature. So on the backside before the turn, there used to be a, a manhole cover with a really big dip in it. That if you weren't paying attention, you can kind of get rattled on on your bike. So they it looks like this year they filled that in with some really choppy uh, cold patch, and now it's like a a little partial bump. Not a bump. Launch. It's something more rigid than that. <laughs> uh, it sounded like guys may have been close to dropping chains going over it. So definitely uh, something new to watch out there. So like, always keeping it fresh. There was a puddle. And then the, did you see the guy? There was, was puddle? Yeah, before the last corner. Yeah, it was on the inside, right? On the inside. Oh, okay. There was, there was also, <laughs> we were going around before the last corner, and there's a dude like walking towards us on the left side. And he's got like this, uh, you know, he's just, he's just out walking and people start yelling at him. He looks at us and he just gives us the finger. Like, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> you got every right to be there, yeah. Tyler. It's his course yeah. too. He, oh, you think you'd hurt me with your little bikes going 30 miles an hour? Oh, maybe we would. But yeah. Douche. Good for him. Winner of the week. Winner of the week. Yeah. So, uh, that do we guy. need to pick winners and losers? No, no there's no winners or losers. It, it sounds like the course. Is what if they went the other sure. direction? They used to do that. I they mean, that, that'd that spice fun. things up for yeah. you, wouldn't it? Yeah, something to change things up. I, man. How about winter one direction, summer the other direction? Would put the finish line that? in the backside. <laughs> um, yeah, do something different. Yeah, the finish on the back. Maybe that would it, – it's it's just – yeah. I, I've, we went around it 150 times this year at least. Did you do the math on that? I no. want some facts, Chris. No, but it's, it's close to that. Uh, you're probably right. Because so you, you, you practice out there too, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, me and one other guy. We go out there. <laughs> uh, anyways, what 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 about our, so we did finished up the tour of California? Just complaining right now. I know, okay? which is fine. We'll put this in the old guys yell at clouds part two. It's, I told them no clouds should, today. Uh, as I'm complaining, I'm remembering my recommendation to the their group was that they lengthen the race. <laughs> <laughs> I said they should make it like was it three hours? Yeah, I think a you wanted hour, like a hundred miles. Yeah, it was a three-hour crit. I think that'd be that would be kind of cool. No, I don't know about that course. We we kind of did that though, right? We did we did a ride in the morning, like Copy Republic, ish. That was and not the, smart in the end. And then we did two. You know, we did that before with Land Park, and it was a long, you know, almost ninety-mile day, and I'm hurting because yeah. it's like two weeks worth of riding for me. Right. So it's tough. But you want, you know, I used, we used to do 100 kilometer crits, like you do uh, Super Week. And they were, the crits were 100K. And it's, I don't know why you would ever do that, but. <laughs> no, I, I just wanted something different and like turning it into more of an endurance event or something, you know. Honestly, I just wanted to do bottle feeds. <laughs> okay. In a crit, but oh well. We would do that too. There was, uh, we did this one crit and I needed a bottle and they had, there was a trash, like a. Uh, trash can like recycling bin or whatever and my uh, managers put a bottle in there and we'd go by and grab him yeah 
Boise. How, how do you do it in a crit? Boise Utility District. No, yeah. this was a this is a Whitefish Bay or something like that in mm. Milwaukee. Yeah, there. At Folsom, that that backside of the course is wide enough. You could have a little feed zone off to the side. And yeah, we're on the climb. That's true. Yeah, a we good could spot. we could probably do this too. We could we could do our own crit out there. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of work. Hours. Okay. And All right, then, we finished up the tour of California. Um, we didn't. We didn't go down in the last day because I mean it, it's tough. This is I, I couldn't imagine following a, a big race all the time, or, or or even this whole race. Yeah, or even this whole race. It but, was it was. Uh, I think the only thing we're gonna say is that it was just even just going two days and trying to cover it. We covered it like idiots because we we went there like fans and we we're kind of running around checking everything out, um, which was fun. I'm yeah. glad we did that. Um, but the the guys that work for. Velo News and the publications that cover it. Seriously, I think we gained a lot of respect for because it it's <laughs> it's tiring to try and be at all the finishes and be at the starts and you know do all that stuff. And we didn't have to transport like every day their new hotel and right. Yeah, they were definitely uh, they had a system down and knew how to get through this the event pretty pretty smoothly. Where they weren't out at every possible thing. They spent a lot of time in the media room writing their their reports. I'm guessing and then hit the conference and called it good. Yeah, they actually delivered. On content, <laughs> we, we, <laughs> got, we got a little bit. Of content. We didn't have to do that. So we had some pictures and some some recordings, which was. What'd good. you think of the last day that we didn't go? We'll just recap that. What'd you think of the last day uh, for the for the women, men and the women? Uh, the men's sprint was pretty amazing, right? Like yeah. it looked like uh, what was the gentleman from uh, Giant or from where? Uh, someone. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Who's that? The Giant from Giant. I forget his name. He's like six foot eight. Yeah, the guy who it looked like. Didn't but throw his bike for right. all reason you know, purposes. He should have won the race, but yeah, he doesn't throw his bike. Which you know what? That's tough. It's I agree. I agree. Everybody's like, "Oh, sprinter throws his bike." You know what? Sometimes you screw it up, and you're. Right. I'm sure he was just trying to get out watts and get up there, and all of a sudden it's there. And sometimes your pedal stroke is just not quite conducive for the exact timing. So right, exactly. So um, what was up with Kittle? He just sucked yeah he shit the bed i mean his team was looking like they were really well positioned coming into the last kilometer and then uh quick step just came around and like they were standing still that was i, I thought for sure we'd see something out of kittle in that last sprint he kind of gave up too i he mean he really did yeah. uh, it looked like he gave up and then he tried to go and it was way too late by that point right so then but, the women's field the uh, uh, cuban girl won right um Kind of shut up the Americans. Well, for, is that for the Team Mexico team? No, this, I think it's the Astana. Astana team. Oh, okay. Come on. The Astana rider from Cuba won. And everyone else on the team was Mexican. <laughs> it's not true. I think they were, actually. On the Astana team? Oh, really? Okay. I, I could be wrong. I don't know. Could we be. just followed the race. <laughs> and, and, so, no, but the, so that's done and dusted. But what do you think of the just the, the whole idea of, or like, your 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 thoughts about following the race and the behind the scenes stuff besides, you know, not being a professional journalist. But it, was, it was fun. It was cool to see how, uh, how quickly they get the podiums up and, and so forth. Um, and how little uh, difference there is for the press versus a normal person that's just there. Yeah. So, um, although yeah, cool. we did get allowed in to a lot of little different spots with our green, we're not Trust sure. Passion. Didn't we have question as to whether or not we were actually allowed? But th- nobody said no, so we just kind of there were some uh, apparently some unwritten rules about where you can and can't go uh, at the Tahoe stage. One guy made it really clear where Tyler and I could not be, and asked that somebody install a barricade to keep us out. Well, he told <laughs> us to move. We did, and we, I moved to where he said I could be. And then later on, I'm there, and he's yelling at me, and I'm like, "This is where he told me to be." So then he just grabs a barrier and and changes the whole structure <laughs> so that i'm now barricaded out which is fine and you know have it that way but we got in with our parking and, and right. everything else so yeah and then getting access to the media area and getting to listen to the conference and, and all that was pretty cool too what about the last day um green jersey fiasco oh that was awful yeah, yeah was i watched that that's one of those things where you're watching it and you you, you want to turn it because you're just like oh god this is awful so set the scene real quick uh, For those who aren't uh, in the know, well, there even the behind the scenes footage, like before Caleb Ewan gets called up, they're showing they're showing behind the stage, and it's like, um, uh, what's the quick step guy? Gaviria. Gaviria's sitting on like the first step and then Caleb Ewan comes in and he walks in and he goes up and sits on the top step waiting for a second and you know one of the ladies comes back and says hey Caleb come on and so <laughs> he's like cool and you know he goes over there and he 
goes to hold up the jersey, the green jersey, which he clearly didn't win, and it's got the Quick Step logo on it. And, and he's you, you look on his face is like, uh, oh uh, yeah, like I'm sh- he didn't want to put it on. Um, but I think they actually got it on him. They did. They did. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah somehow. Yeah. Um, which. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't actually win the points, and uh, he sh- shouldn't have had to put it on. And then I don't think, from what I, I was listening to another podcast, when uh, Gavari actually went to put it on, it, it didn't have the logo at all. It was blank. Yeah, it was blank, which is weird. Maybe they didn't, Caleb they didn't want to put on the, that Caleb Ewan one. It was all sweaty. Well, maybe he took it. Who knows? I don't think he took it. He, I think they just probably gave him a, a clean new one. I don't know. Oh, okay. They didn't want to mess it up. And and maybe that's the problem of, you know, those presenters aren't, it's not Dave Toll, you know, telling, grabbing the writers or, or Brad, whatever the name is that was doing it. These are just people that are trying to make sure, okay, this person's coming up and they maybe they can't tell Caleb from Gaviria. So. Right. Well, they do a really good job, especially they when you look at the, the they, they turn that around quick. There's people still finishing and they're doing podiums for, yeah. in, in a lot of those stages. Yeah, they for, for the Tahoe stage, I mean, they had the women's podium up and done before 10, 15 minutes had passed from the winning time. It was it was quick and efficient. Chico was like that this year, though. I was uh, for, for a race that hadn't been We're like waiting that. for you to say that. Well, there's a 15 minute protest period at oh, that's NorCal true. Uh, that's races. True. There doesn't appear to be a 15 minute protest period for UCI no. races. With, with the uh, Elk Grove, uh, when I, we were like standing back there, they were calling up one of the jerseys, and one of the people in the background, she's yelling up there, "No, not now, not now!" And they're like, "And then," the, and, the, and she's like, "Okay, finally." She just keeps yelling, and then. They're bringing the person on stage, and she just gives like a wave of whatever. <laughs> uh, do it now, fine. Yeah. So good There's stuff. A lot of moving parts. It was cool to see yeah. kind of how those parts work and how efficient they are. Yeah, I enjoyed it, and uh, maybe we'll do it again if it comes through here next year. I don't think I'd travel to be able to do this. Oh, we'll definitely do it again. <laughs> what okay. are you talking about? Okay. We'll 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 apply for the passes. Oh at the yeah, very least. yeah, of course. It might not grant us access this time around. Did you <laughs> Did you feel like you were missing out Saturday by not going down? No. No. All right. I felt a little bit. Really? I, I think it would have been a, a bigger zoo and it just would have been uh, a little too much. Yeah. All right. So what do we uh, what do we got coming up? Oh, you know, da- the Dauphiné Libre is coming up, which is the Tour de France preview. I think that's next week. And then we got the, the Criterium. Criterium du Dauphiné. Yeah. yeah. What did I say? Okay. Dauphiné Libre. I think that's what it used to be called. Okay. And um, then you got the tour coming up. So, I mean, you know, we just got done with the Giro and then you're going to have the tour. It's crazy stuff. How about the locally? We have... Right now, the Memorial Day is the the stage race, so we don't know what the results on that. Maybe we'll talk we about that not. next time. There's the Regalado road race is coming up next week. Okay, you uh, doing that? No. Okay. I think there's seven people registered for it. Okay. Dash for cash is the week after. Okay. And then there's a a, a red kite event the weekend after that. I don't see the Nevada City Race Classic on the actual NCNCA calendar, so we got to figure out what's going on with that. Really? I, I hope it's happening. It's not on the calendar? It is not on the calendar. Someone else mentioned that, too, um, on online. So we'll get to the bottom. Kurt, we'll let you get to the bottom of that. Oh, boy. And we'll talk to Strausser, maybe. I would like and to then... register for said event, but there's no registration page. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll get to the bottom of that today. I need to also lose some weight for that. And then we have Lakeport on the 30th. Lakeport on the 30th. Correct. We know that that's on the calendar. Yeah. Right? It is, yeah. And it looks like they've got some... Some new sponsors and some uh, raffles. They're they're giving uh, away a bike, I believe. Damn. If you're a pre-reg rider, so that that's one event that it, it you know some of these things are kind of run on rails and they run year after year and nothing changes. This guy is clearly excited about this race, trying a lot of new things. If you're into uh, Criterium racing and you want to try something kind of neat, I think this one's going to be. This one's gonna be cool, right? They're, he's doing it at night too, so yeah, the pro it's a races. Twilight race, kind of downtown vibe. Um, extended the length of the race. Looks like he's got it for seventy-five minutes for the P one two field. Uh, should be a good time. And Taking a I've, lot of feedback from from people out there. Yes, definitely. And from the folks that did the race last year, I heard nothing but good things about the course. Uh, yeah, I've, I've heard that as well. <clears throat> um, this is you said the thirty. I'm gonna just look here in my calendar real quick. Thirtieth. Yep, nothing, Tyler. Nothing. Um, it says uh, one of the kids is supposed to on the schedule to clean their bathroom that day, so I schedule those things out in advance. <laughs> Good for you. But um, maybe we'll try to make it out there and stay overnight. Because no, you say drive back. Chris is giving me the drive back look. Tyler, I'll stay with you. 
Thank oh, you. Okay. I was thinking of taking my wife, but you, you'll oh, do. Okay. In a pinch. <laughs> Any last words for uh, everyone for this week? Uh, no, no last words. Just a yeah. It's good. Good to go out and do Folsom again. Um, even though was, <laughs> I was complaining about it, it's still still fun to do. It was everybody. a good turnout. Uh, I think the pre-reg numbers were a little lean, like two days before it closed, and the fields ended up being really big. I think the the thirty fives. One two three was like sixty riders. P one two was like sixty five. When, when Ken Todd called us to the line, he said, "You know, sixty riders or something like that for the field." And I looked, and I'm like, "This is that's bull crap." And then about half of all the people that were on the line just kept coming around from around the corner doing the warm up lap. And yeah, it was like sixty. So it was. It was. I like having big fields like that, yeah. or at least ish. Especially big-ish. with another big new race on the calendar on the same day that that folks still came out and supported the local race was good to see. Agreed. What do you got going for this week for for bike riding? Either one of you could. You, be you guys hot. are into gravel, right? I I'm not into gravel. I don't have a gravel bike yet. At least not one that's built. But anyway, it's going to be like 90 degrees tomorrow and Wednesday. All right. I'm not looking forward to that. Yeah. So start uh, maybe it's good. Start losing weight on the bike a little bit. Pass out on the side of the road. How about you, Kurt? You got anything fun for? Are you going to show up on the, the Tuesday Wednesday rides? And yeah, I'm going to show up Wednesday. Okay, for sure. Not Tuesday. I'll probably be there Tuesday, but. I was just letting Tyler know I'll definitely be there Wednesday. I don't know. Good. Yeah, I got I got dropped bad last week, so that's that's <laughs> what his point is. That wasn't my point. You were there, you just didn't show up. I I tried. I, I wanna say I got a, well, I did get a flat up Sierra College <laughs> and I wanna say that's the reason, but if I really, really think about it, I, that wasn't the problem. No. That was just the inevitability of how bad I was riding. I was so heavy I, I popped a two. <laughs> <laughs> Pinch flatted. <laughs> it was All a staple. It was a staple. When you sat back down. <laughs> the climb. Yeah, exactly. All right, I think we're done. Um, thanks, guys, for coming out for breakfast. All right, yeah. thanks. All right, take care. Bye.